a design is never done. There's no such thing as a perfect design, and one of the greatest opportunities 3D printing lends itself to is the ability to refine and remix designs to suit specific needs. Hi, I'm Rob, lead designer here at Print Lab, and in this video I'm going to be showing you the process that I took to refine a design that was submitted to our Makeable Assistive Technology Challenge. The aim was to iterate on an existing product and make it accessible for the open source assistive technology community to be downloaded, used and even remixed again by anyone, anywhere. Throughout the video I'll cover some of the issues and constraints inherent in 3D printing and show some tricks and tips on how to overcome them. You'll see how I refine my designs through multiple prototypes and learn that it's not only okay to fail but a necessary part of the design process. The design I refined is an assistive writing aid called the Perfect Pencil Placer. It was developed by engineering students Jasmine and Megan for their end user Michelle who has hypotonia. This is a condition that makes it difficult for her to grip a pen or a pencil for a long period of time. As a whole, the design performs its function perfectly and considering it was created over a weekend without any previous knowledge of Fusion 360, well, it's an incredible achievement. That said, there were still some areas of the design which I felt could be improved. The main area I wanted to address is how the device grips the pen. Currently different adapters are needed for different sized pens, but with my redesign I wanted to create a holder that can change its size to suit the pen. I also wanted to address the ergonomics of the design. The current design is quite bulky for most people and it could fit the natural resting position of a hand a little better. It also has a very large surface area in contact with the paper, which causes considerable drag when using the device. In terms of printability, this design is really easy to print without the need for support materials. That said, the product still requires some assembly and I'd like to see how I can consolidate the different parts of the design moving forwards. After mapping out the key improvements I wanted to incorporate, I moved on to the ideation phase where I used sketch overlays to break down my thought process and highlight any research that still needed doing before moving forwards. I started off by looking at how the pen could be held by the device and broke down how the students had currently implemented this in their design. I knew I wanted to move away from their implementation eventually, but first I wanted to note down some of the small changes to their design which would improve its functionality. I then went on to coming up with new ways of holding the pen, finally settling on a design which I hoped would dissipate the pressure across the body of the pen so as not to damage it. Thinking back to the design improvements I was trying to make, I came up with a design that embedded the pen holder into the flexure component of the mouse, reducing the part count and complexity of the assembly. I knew at this point there was a lot that could still be improved, but I had enough worked out now so that I could start prototyping in 3D. Using my sketch overlays as a foundation, I began building up the initial prototype in Fusion 360. I'm a big believer in getting to the prototype stage as quickly as possible, so rather than addressing every issue, I tried to make some small improvements on the initial design. I mainly focused on improving the pen holder. I did this by modelling up the design that I'd sketched out during my sketch ideation phase, sizing it to allow a range of pens to be held. I also reduced the overall scale of the model to test how it would feel in comparison to the original scale. Finally, I split the model to allow it to be printed without supports. This went against my goal of reducing the part count, but at this stage my focus was on testing the pen holder mechanism, and I knew the overall form was bound to change anyway, so I didn't worry too much about reducing part count just yet. When testing the prototype, the first thing that became immediately apparent was that the size and shape of my flexure component was off, as it didn't hold the pen at the correct height. On the other hand, the amount of flex it had was perfect and required very little pressure to push, so I added a spacer to allow me to test the model without the need for a complete reprint. I also evaluated the pen holder mechanism, and although it worked to hold the pen, I made a note of some small changes to its shape that would improve its function for the next prototype. In my second iteration, I experimented with part consolidation by combining the mouse section of the design with the flexing section. It took me a while to get a shape that I was happy with, and I ended up using a computer mouse as a reference for my shape. I then cut for a cavity that would allow the pen to be held, and another cavity that would allow the mouse to flex. Once I was happy, I printed the design and quickly realised that I had made the same mistake that I had made on my last design. I hadn't given the pen enough clearance from the ground, and I didn't give the mouse enough surface area to grab the pen. The things I could test were the flex, which seemed to work well, but the ergonomics didn't really fit my hand properly. It looked like it was back to the drawing board. For iteration 3, I increased the thickness of the mouse which made it much more comfortable on the hand. 
I also increased the surface area in contact with the pen, which meant it gripped much better and distributed the pressure across more of the pen. As this design required an allen key to tighten, I thought I would add a place to hold an allen key on the design, so it was always ready when needed. The issue we had with this design is that thickening up the mouse meant it took a lot more force to flex, and this in turn made it much harder to write with. For version 4 I decided to thin out the back section to make it easier to flex, and chamfered the front edges so that it was easier to see the pen as you wrote. This design worked well, but we still found it difficult to make small precise movements. We deduced that this was because there was a lot of drag from the base of the mouse and its large surface area in contact with the page, so this would be the focus of our next iteration. The final iteration I created tried to implement all of the learnings from our previous prototypes. It keeps the flexure mechanism intact whilst improving the general ergonomics, pen gripping system and printability. I have also given the base a subtle curve to reduce the friction whilst using the device. After reviewing the design, I was really happy with the outcome and I believe that I have succeeded in nearly all the criteria that I set out. That said, the part count is still high to allow for easy printing and this means that assembly is still required. Rather than making changes to something I'm already happy with, I decided to take a sidestep and explore a completely different design based on a single form with no assembly required. As I was messing around with my previous prototypes, there was an interesting moment where I inverted the mouse and experimented with a tilting action. This sparked the idea for a new design, so I jumped back into CAD to mock it up and see if it would work. This design was, in my eyes, a much more elegant solution to the problem. The pen could still be taken off the page by tilting the mouse back slightly, and a much smaller area would be contacting the page at any one point, meaning it glided across the page a lot easier. It could also be printed in place as one easy to print component, with only the need for a screw to be added to hold the pen. Although this new design worked perfectly, I was still not happy that we needed a screw to be added to make the mouse function. This final iteration eliminated the need for a screw altogether. The new design holds the pen through friction without the need for any external hardware, and can flex just enough to hold a range of pen sizes. Although this design consolidated all parts into a single elegant form, it did require slightly more dexterity and grip strength to use, which brings me on to the conclusion. A design is never done. There is no such thing as a perfect design. Something that functions perfectly for one person in one situation may function poorly for someone else in another. In this case, although our first redesign requires assembly, it is much more suited for those with very limited grip strength. In contrast, our second redesign is much easier to print, but better suited for those with a little more grip strength. It all comes down to personal needs and preferences. I hope you've enjoyed following this design journey. And remember, a design is never done.